Nash Equilibrium In game theory, the Nash Equilibrium, named after the late mathematician John Forbes Nash Jr., is a proposed solution of a non-cooperative game involving two or more players in which each player is assumed to know the equilibrium strategies of the other players, and no player has anything to gain by changing only their own strategy. In terms of game theory, if each player has chosen a strategy, and no player can benefit by changing strategies while the other players keep theirs unchanged, then the current set of strategy choices and their corresponding payoffs constitutes a Nash equilibrium. Stated simply, Alice and Bob are in Nash equilibrium if Alice is making the best decision she can, taking into account Bob's decision while Bob's decision remains unchanged, and Bob is making the best decision he can, taking into account Alice's decision while Alice's decision remains unchanged. Likewise, a group of players are in Nash equilibrium if each one is making the best decision possible, taking into account the decisions of the others in the game as long as the other party's decisions remain unchanged. Nash showed that there is a Nash equilibrium for every finite game, see further the article on strategy. Game theorists use the Nash equilibrium concept to analyze the outcome of the strategic interaction of several decision makers. In other words, it provides a way of predicting what will happen if several people or several institutions are making decisions at the same time, and if the outcome for each of them depends on the decisions of the others. The simple insight underlying John Nash's idea is that one cannot predict the result of the choices of multiple decision makers if one analyzes those decisions in isolation. Instead, one must ask what each player would do, taking into account the decision making of the others. Nash equilibrium has been used to analyze hostile situations like war and arms races, and also how conflict may be mitigated by repeated interaction. It has also been used to study to what extent people with different preferences can cooperate, and whether they will take risks to achieve a cooperative outcome. It has been used to study the adoption of technical standards, and also the occurrence of bank runs and currency crises. Other applications include traffic flow, how to organize auctions, the outcome of efforts exerted by multiple parties in the education process, regulatory legislation such as environmental regulations, natural resource management analyzing strategies in marketing, and even penalty kicks in football. The Nash Equilibrium was named after American mathematician John Forbes Nash Jr. A version of the Nash Equilibrium concept was first known to be used in 1838 by Antoine Augustine Cournot in his theory of oligopoly. In Cournot's theory, firms choose how much output to produce to maximize their own profit. However, the best output for one firm depends on the outputs of others. A Kernot equilibrium occurs when each firm's output maximizes its profits given the output of the other firms, which is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Kernot also introduced the concept of best response dynamics in his analysis of the stability of equilibrium. However, Nash's definition of equilibrium is broader than Kernot's. It is also broader than the definition of a Pareto efficient equilibrium, since the Nash definition makes no judgments about the optimality of the equilibrium being generated. The modern game theoretic concept of Nash equilibrium is instead defined in terms of mixed strategies, where players choose a probability distribution over possible actions. The concept of the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium was introduced by John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern in their 1944 book The Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. However, their analysis was restricted to the special case of zero-sum games. They showed that a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium will exist for any zero-sum game with a finite set of actions. The contribution of Nash in his 1951 article Non-Cooperative Games was to define a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium for any game with a finite set of actions and prove that at least one Nash equilibrium must exist in such a game. The key to Nash's ability to prove existence far more generally than von Neumann lay in his definition of equilibrium. According to Nash, an equilibrium point is an n tuple such that each player's mixed strategy maximizes his payoff if the strategies of the others are held fixed. Thus, each player's strategy is optimal against those of the others. Just putting the problem in this framework allowed Nash to employ the Kakutani fixed point theorem in his 1950 paper and a variant upon it in his 1951 paper used the Brouwer fixed point theorem to prove that there had to exist at least one mix of strategy profile that mapped back into itself for finite player games, namely, a strategy profile that did not call for a shift in strategies that could improve payoffs. Since the development of the Nash equilibrium concept, game theorists have discovered that it makes misleading predictions in certain circumstances. They have proposed many related solution concepts designed to overcome perceived flaws in the Nash concept. 
One particularly important issue is that some Nash equilibria may be based on threats that are not credible. Apostrophe. In 1965, Reinhard Zelten proposed subgame perfect equilibrium as a refinement that eliminates equilibria which depend on non credible threats. Other extensions of the Nash equilibrium concept have addressed what happens if a game is repeated, or what happens if a game is played in the absence of complete information. However, Subsequent refinements and extensions of the Nash equilibrium concept share the main insight on which Nash's concept rests all equilibrium concepts analyze what choices will be made when each player takes into account the decision making of others. Informally, a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if no player can do better by unilaterally changing his or her strategy. To see what this means, imagine that each player is told the strategies of the others. Suppose then that each player asks themselves, knowing the strategies of the other players, and treating the strategies of the other players as set in stone, can I benefit by changing my strategy? If any player could answer yes, then that set of strategies is not a Nash equilibrium. But if every player prefers not to switch then the strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium. Thus, each strategy in a Nash equilibrium is a best response to all other strategies in that equilibrium. The Nash equilibrium may sometimes appear non-rational in a third-person perspective. This is because a Nash equilibrium is not necessarily Pareto optimal. The Nash equilibrium may also have non-rational consequences in sequential games because players may threaten each other with non-rational moves. For such games, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium may be more meaningful as a tool of analysis. Let formula underscore one be a game with formula underscore two players where formula underscore 3 is the strategy set for player formula underscore 4, formula underscore 5 is the set of strategy profiles and formula underscore 6 is its payoff function evaluated at formula underscore 7. Let formula underscore 8 be a strategy profile of player formula underscore 4 and formula underscore 10 be a strategy profile of all players except for player formula underscore 4. When each player formula underscore 12 chooses strategy formula underscore 8 resulting in strategy profile formula underscore 14 and player formula underscore 4 obtains payoff formula underscore 16. Note that the payoff depends on the strategy profile chosen, i.e., on the strategy chosen by player formula underscore 4 as well as the strategies chosen by all the other players. A strategy profile formula underscore 18 is a Nash equilibrium if no unilateral deviation in strategy by any single player is profitable for that player, that is, when the inequality above holds strictly for all players and all feasible alternative strategies, then the equilibrium is classified as a strict Nash equilibrium. If instead, for some player, there is exact equality between formula underscore 20 and some other strategy in the set formula underscore 21 then the equilibrium is classified as a weak Nash equilibrium. A game can have a pure strategy or a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Nash proves that if we allow mixed strategies, then every game with a finite number of players in which each player can choose from finitely many pure strategies is at least one Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium need not exist if the set of choices is infinite and non-compact. An example is when two players simultaneously name a natural number with the player naming the larger number wins. However, Nash equilibrium exists if the set of choices is compact with continuous payoff. An example is if two players simultaneously pick a real number between 0 and 1 with player 1 winnings equaling square root of the distance between the two numbers. The coordination game is a classic two-player, two-strategy game, with an example payoff matrix shown to the right. The player should thus coordinate both adopting strategy A, to receive the highest payoff, i.e., 4. If both players chose strategy B though, there is still a Nash equilibrium. Although each player is awarded less than optimal payoff, neither player has incentive to change strategy due to a reduction in the immediate payoff. A famous example of this type of game was called the stag hunt, in the game two players may choose to hunt a stag or a rabbit, the former providing more meat than the latter. The caveat is that the stag must be cooperatively hunted, so if one player attempts to hunt the stag, while the other hunts the rabbit, he will fail in hunting, whereas if they both hunt it they will split the payload. The game hence exhibits two equilibria at and and hence the player's optimal strategy depend on their expectation on what the other player may do. If one hunter trusts that the other will hunt the stag, they should hunt the stag, however if they suspect that the other will hunt the rabbit, they should hunt the rabbit. This game was used as an analogy for social cooperation, 
since much of the benefit that people gain in society depends upon people cooperating and implicitly trusting one another to act in a manner corresponding with cooperation. Another example of a coordination game is the setting where two technologies are available to two firms with comparable products, and they have to elect a strategy to become the market standard. If both firms agree on the chosen technology, high sales are expected for both firms. If the firms do not agree on the standard technology, few sales result. Both strategies are Nash equilibria of the game. Driving on a road against an oncoming car, and having to choose either to swerve on the left or to swerve on the right of the road, is also a coordination game. For example, with payoffs 10 meaning no crash and 0 meaning a crash, the coordination game can be defined with the following payoff matrix. In this case there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria, when both choose to either drive on the left or on the right. If we admit mixed strategies, then there are three Nash equilibria for the same case, two we have seen from the pure strategy form, where the probabilities are for player 1, for player 2, and for player 1, for player 2 respectively. We add another where the probabilities for each player are. Imagine two prisoners held in separate cells, interrogated simultaneously, and offered deals for betraying their fellow criminal. They can cooperate by not snitching, or defect by betraying the other. However, there is a catch, if both players defect, then they both serve a longer sentence than if neither said anything. Lower jail sentences are interpreted as higher payoffs. The prisoner's dilemma has a similar matrix as depicted for the coordination game, but the maximum reward for each player is obtained only when the player's decisions are different. Each player improves their own situation by switching from cooperating to defecting, given knowledge that the other player's best decision is to defect. The prisoner's dilemma thus has a single Nash equilibrium, both players coosing to defect. What has long made this an interesting case to study is the fact that this scenario is globally inferior to both cooperating. That is, both players would be better off if they both chose to cooperate instead of both choosing to defect. However, each player could improve their own situation by breaking the mutual cooperation, no matter how the other player possibly changes their decision. An application of Nash equilibria is in determining the expected flow of traffic in a network. Consider the graph on the right. If we assume that there are cars traveling from A to D, what is the expected distribution of traffic in the network? This situation can be modeled as a game where every traveler has a choice of three strategies, where each strategy is a route from A to D. The payoff of each strategy is the travel time of each route. In the graph on the right, a car traveling via experiences travel time of, where is the number of cars traveling on edge? Thus, payoffs for any given strategy depend on the choices of the other players, as is usual. However, the goal, in this case, is to minimize travel time, not maximize it. Equilibrium will occur when the time on all paths is exactly the same. When that happens, no single driver has any incentive to switch routes, since it can only add to their travel time. For the graph on the right, if, for example, 100 cars are traveling from A to D, then equilibrium will occur when 25 drivers travel via, 50 via, and 25 via. Every driver now has a total travel time of 3.75. Notice that this distribution is not, actually, socially optimal. If the 100 cars agreed that 50 travel via and the other 50 through, then travel time for any single car would actually be 3.5, which is less than 3.75. This is also the Nash equilibrium if the path between B and C is removed, which means that adding another possible route can decrease the efficiency of the system, a phenomenon known as Bress's paradox. This can be illustrated by a two-player game in which both players simultaneously choose an integer from 0 to 3 and they both win the smaller of the two numbers and points. In addition, if one player chooses a larger number than the other, then they have to give up two points to the other. This game has a unique pure strategy Nash equilibrium, both players choosing zero. Any other strategy can be improved by a player switching their number to one less than that of the other player. In the adjacent table, if the game begins at the green square, it is in player 1's interest to move to the purple square and it is in player 2's interest to move to the blue square. Although it would not fit the definition of a competition game, if the game is modified so that the two players win the named amount if they both choose the same number, and otherwise win nothing, then there are four Nash equilibria, and there is an easy numerical way to identify Nash equilibria on a payoff matrix. It is especially helpful in two-person games where players have more than two strategies. In this case formal analysis may become too long. 
This rule does not apply to the case where mixed strategies are of interest. The rule goes as follows If the first payoff number, in the payoff pair of the cell, is the maximum of the column of the cell, and if the second number is the maximum of the row of the cell, then the cell represents a Nash equilibrium. We can apply this rule to a 3 times 3 matrix. Using the rule, we can very quickly see that the Nash equilibria cells are, and indeed, for cell 40 is the maximum of the first column and 25 is the maximum of the second row. For 25 is the maximum of the second column and 40 is the maximum of the first row. Same for cell. For other cells, either one or both of the duplet members are not the maximum of the corresponding rows and columns. This said, the actual mechanics of finding equilibrium cells is obvious, find the maximum of a column and check if the second member of the pair is the maximum of the row. If these conditions are met, the cell represents a Nash equilibrium. Check all columns this way to find all knee cells. An n times n matrix may have between 0 and n times n pure strategy Nash equilibria. The concept of stability, useful in the analysis of many kinds of equilibria, can also be applied to Nash equilibria. A Nash equilibrium for a mixed strategy game is stable if a small change in probabilities for one player leads to a situation where two conditions hold. If these cases are both met, then a player with a small change in their mixed strategy will return immediately to the Nash equilibrium. The equilibrium is said to be stable. If condition 1 does not hold, then the equilibrium is unstable. If only condition 1 holds, then there are likely to be an infinite number of optimal strategies for the player who changed. In the driving game example above there are both stable and unstable equilibria. The equilibria involving mixed strategies with 100% probabilities are stable. If either player changes their probabilities slightly, they will be both at a disadvantage, and their opponent will have no reason to change their strategy and turn out the equilibrium is unstable. If either player changes their probabilities, then the other player immediately has a better strategy at either or. Stability is crucial in practical applications of Nash equilibria, since the mixed strategy of each player is not perfectly known, but has to be inferred from statistical distribution of their actions in the game. In this case unstable equilibria are very unlikely to arise in practice, since any minute change in the proportions of each strategy seen will lead to a change in strategy and the breakdown of the equilibrium. The Nash equilibrium defines stability only in terms of unilateral deviations. In cooperative games such a concept is not convincing enough. Strong Nash equilibrium allows for deviations by every conceivable coalition. Formally, a strong Nash equilibrium is a Nash equilibrium in which no coalition, taking the actions of its complements as given, can cooperatively deviate in a way that benefits all of its members. However, the strong Nash concept is sometimes perceived as too strong in that the environment allows for unlimited private communication. In fact, Strong Nash equilibrium has to be Pareto efficient. As a result of these requirements, strong Nash is too rare to be useful in many branches of game theory. However, in games such as elections with many more players than possible outcomes, it can be more common than a stable equilibrium. A refined Nash equilibrium known as coalition proof Nash equilibrium occurs when players cannot do better even if they are allowed to communicate and make self enforcing agreement to deviate. Every correlated strategy supported by iterated strict dominance and on the Pareto frontier is a CPNE. Further, it is possible for a game to have an Ash equilibrium that is resilient against coalitions less than a specified size, K. CPNE is related to the theory of the core. Finally in the 80s, building with great depth on such ideas Merton's stable equilibria were introduced as a solution concept. Merton's stable equilibria satisfy both forward induction and backward induction. In a game theory context stable equilibria now usually refer to Merton's stable equilibria. If a game has a unique Nash equilibrium and is played among players under certain conditions, then the knee strategy set will be adopted. Sufficient conditions to guarantee that the Nash equilibrium is played are Examples of game theory problems in which these conditions are not met. In his PhD dissertation, John Nash proposed two interpretations of his equilibrium concept, with the objective of showing how equilibrium points. A second interpretation, that Nash referred to by the mass action interpretation, is less demanding on players. For a formal result along these lines, see Kuhn, H. and et al., 1996, The Work of John Nash and Game Theory, Journal of Economic Theory, 69, 153-185. Due to the limited conditions in which knee can actually be observed, 
they are rarely treated as a guide to day-to-day -day behavior, or observed in practice in human negotiations. However, as a theoretical concept in economics and evolutionary biology, the knee has explanatory power. The payoff in economics is utility, and in evolutionary biology is gene transmission. Both are the fundamental bottom line of survival. Researchers who apply games theory in these fields claim that strategies failing to maximize these for whatever reason will be competed out of the market or environment, which are ascribed the ability to test all strategies. This conclusion is drawn from the stability theory above. In these situations, the assumption that the strategy observed is actually a knee has often been borne out by research. The Nash equilibrium is a superset of the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The subgame perfect equilibrium in addition to the Nash equilibrium requires that strategy also is a Nash equilibrium in every subgame of that game. This eliminates all non-credible threats, that is, strategies that contain non-rationale moves in order to make the counterplayer change their strategy. The image to the right shows a simple sequential game that illustrates the issue with subgame imperfect Nash equilibria. In this game, player 1 chooses left or right, which is followed by player 2 being called upon to be kind or unkind to player 1. However, player 2 only stands to gain from being unkind if player 1 goes left. If player 1 goes right, the rational player 2 would de facto be kind to him in that subgame. However, the non credible threat of being unkind at 2 is still part of the blue Nash equilibrium. Therefore, if rational behavior can be expected by both parties the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium may be a more meaningful solution concept when such dynamic inconsistencies arise. Nash's original proof used Brouwer's fixed point theorem. We give a simpler proof via the Kakutani fixed point theorem, following Nash's 1950 paper. To prove the existence of a Nash equilibrium, let formula underscore 22 be the best response of player I to the strategies of all other players. Here. Formula underscore 24, where formula underscore 25, is a mixed strategy profile in the set of all mixed strategies and formula underscore 26 is the payoff function for player I. Define a set valued function formula underscore 27 such that formula underscore 28. The existence of a Nash equilibrium is equivalent to formula underscore 29 having a fixed point. Takutani's fixed point theorem guarantees the existence of a fixed point if the following four conditions are satisfied. Condition 1. Is satisfied from the fact that formula underscore 34 is a simplex and thus compact. Convexity follows from player's ability to mix strategies. Formula underscore 34 is non empty as long as players have strategies. Condition 2. And 3. Are satisfied by way of Berg's maximum theorem. Because formula underscore 26 is continuous and compact, formula underscore 37 is non-empty and upper hemi-continuous. Condition 4. Is satisfied as a result of mixed strategies. Suppose formula underscore 38, then formula underscore 39. I.e. if two strategies maximize payoffs, then a mix between the two strategies will yield the same payoff. Therefore, there exists a fixed point in formula underscore 40 and a Nash equilibrium. When Nash made this point to John von Neumann in 1949, von Neumann famously dismissed it with the words, that's trivial, you know that that's just a fixed point theorem. We have a game formula underscore 41 where formula underscore 42 is the number of players and formula underscore 43 is the action set for the players. All of the action sets formula underscore 44 are finite. Let formula underscore 45 denote the set of mixed strategies for the players. The finiteness of the formula underscore 44s ensures the compactness of formula underscore 47. We can now define the gain functions. For a mixed strategy formula underscore 48, we let the gain for player formula underscore 4 on action formula underscore 50 be. The gain function represents the benefit a player gets by unilaterally changing their strategy. We now define formula underscore 52 where for formula underscore 54. We see that. Next we define. It is easy to see that each formula underscore 57 is a valid mixed strategy in formula underscore 58. It is also easy to check that each formula underscore 57 is a continuous function of formula underscore 60, and hence formula underscore 61 is a continuous function. As the cross product of a finite number of compact convex sets, formula underscore 47 is also compact and convex. Applying the Brouwer fixed point theorem to formula underscore 61 and formula underscore 47, we conclude that formula underscore 61 has a fixed point in formula underscore 47.
Call it formula underscore 67. We claim that formula underscore 67 is a Nash equilibrium and formula underscore 69. For this purpose, it suffices to show that. This simply states that each player gains no benefit by unilaterally changing their strategy, which is exactly the necessary condition for a Nash equilibrium. Now assume that the gains are not all zero. Therefore, formula underscore 71 and formula underscore 50 such that formula underscore 73. Note then that. So let. Also we shall denote formula underscore 76 as the gain vector index by actions and formula underscore 44. Since formula underscore 67 is the fixed point we have. Since formula underscore 80 we have that formula underscore 81 is some positive scaling of the vector formula underscore 82. Now we claim that. To see this, we first note that if formula underscore 73 then this is true by definition of the gain function. Now assume that formula underscore 85 dot by our previous statements we have that. And so the left term is zero, giving us that the entire expression is formula underscore 87 as needed. So we finally have that, where the last inequality follows since formula underscore 81 is a non-zero vector. But this is a clear contradiction, so all the gains must indeed be zero dot therefore, formula underscore 67 is a Nash equilibrium for formula underscore 69 as needed. If a player A has a dominant strategy formula underscore 92 then there exists a Nash equilibrium in which A plays formula underscore 92. In the case of two players A and B, there exists a Nash equilibrium in which A plays formula underscore 92 and B plays a best response to formula underscore 92. If formula underscore 92 is a strictly dominant strategy, A plays formula underscore 92 in all Nash equilibria. If both A and B have strictly dominant strategies, there exists a unique Nash equilibrium in which each plays their strictly dominant strategy. In games with mixed strategy Nash equilibria, the probability of a player choosing any particular strategy can be computed by assigning a variable to each strategy that represents a fixed probability for choosing that strategy. In order for a player to be willing to randomize, their expected payoff for each strategy should be the same. In addition, the sum of the probabilities for each strategy of a particular player should be 1. This creates a system of equations from which the probabilities of choosing each strategy can be derived. In the matching pennies game, player A loses a point to B if A and B play the same strategy and wins a point from B if they play different strategies. To compute the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, assign A the probability P of playing H and of playing T, and assign B the probability Q of playing N of playing T. Thus a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, in this game, is for each player to randomly choose H or T with P equals half and Q equals half. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.